Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and in today's video we're going to be working on a pair of boots that I have not yet ever shown in any of the videos and as you can tell by the title, it's a brand called Butts and Shoulders. So we're going to check out what they're really made of because they come at a pretty good price tag for a pair of boots like this and we're going to do a little bit of upgrading and do something different compared to what I've seen from this company so far. So let's check it out. <laughs> So thank you for joining us and uh, like I mentioned these boots here are called butts and shoulders So basically I'm assuming the name is because they use the hide off the butt and the shoulder area off of a boot We're gonna dive in a little bit deeper and find out some more research about it and talk about the brand in probably another episode Down the road, but for now we're gonna be breaking these down to really see internally what's going on So I'm just gonna go ahead and start breaking it down and go along with it You can see that they are Goodyear welted. These are in kind of a rough shape This one he even lost the uh, top lift on there wore down the heel at a bad angle and everything So first things first is just break down. So let's start tearing it
All right, everyone. So as you can see, we've got everything broken down, cleaned out the cork. At least in here, there's a little bit of cork here that's going to get sanded out. But uh, interesting shank design, actually. It's a piece of leather that takes up a good chunk of the room here, and it's got the steel shank sandwiched in between. I had to open it up to make sure that the shank wasn't broken or anything. I was kind of curious because when I was bending it, I was like, oh, it seems a little too flexible there for a second. But looks like that shank is intact and everything, so we can uh, put that back together and then clean off that cork get all the stitching cleared out now this boot as you can tell is a 360 degree welt meaning they're stitched all the way around and uh, they do use a cork filling which is definitely a huge plus as well and then the sole they used a leather midsole and then a leather rubber combination style sole on these guys and stitched it clear through which is a good thing definitely um, it does at the half sole point here where that rubber connects eventually it could end up splitting as this one's starting to a little bit so just kind of keep an eye out some people will call this a double sole as well or some companies will in reality it's a leather midsole with a regular sole over top and then leather stacked heel bases but uh, we're not going to be really using these too much we may use like a sliver of it or something but these are still in great shape technically other than being worn down depending on how many layers I'm going to have to use. If I'm just using that one layer I'll probably do that otherwise I'll just build a new one. So still regardless I'll save it. Usually I mark down which foot this is for but I don't need to not on this uh, particular heel base because most of the time on these heel bases if you flip it upside down that outer edge is worn out that means that this is for the right foot so this will show me that this is for the right foot sometimes if they're not worn down that's when I write it down because I want to make sure it's in the right going on the right boot not the left one and everything so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and clear all this up uh, get the stitches pulled on these the stitches seem to be pulling pretty easily so I might be able to use my stitch puller on it and uh, yeah let's continue on everyone so we've got the cork filled in the uh, shank pieces inside here got our leather midsole here all warmed up so it's nice and soft and just gonna go ahead and stick it all together so at this point we're gonna let it just sit and cure for a little while and uh, continue on so thought I'd let you guys see what it looks like before that midsole goes on then
At this point, we're getting very close to being done. I still got to do the edges on it, but I want to clean this up first so that it can dry overnight and everything. I might be able to get it done a little bit sooner if it dries quick enough. Sometimes they cooperate. So I've got a mixture um, of cleaning solution here. This is a light cleaner. This is similar stuff to what we use in, uh, in our baths in the back. This one wasn't getting the full bath treatment necessarily, but uh, I want to make sure to clean the outside as much as possible. But it's a huge mixture of different uh, cleaning solutions that we mix up and it does a great job of light cleaner and everything and helps remove any salts or minerals as well on these. There we go. Now one thing I'm gonna point out and this is every single cobbler out there. We have this kind of stuff happen sometimes. Let me finish scrubbing this. I don't know how it's showing on video. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can see. My camera's sitting a little low. But right here, see that? That's actually some of our contact cement. And uh, where is that little thing? Let me grab uh, some plantation crepe. I'll show you what to do about that. See that right there? All right. So plantation crepe will help remove this. That's why we have a lot of those around. Uh, I should have done this while it wasn't wet. But it shows it off a little bit better. And just wanted to show that this is actually the most common thing amongst cobblers. Because we do so many shoes, we're going to have just a little bit of glue to get somewhere. That's why some shoes we tape off. Sorry, I got interrupted by a call, but... Yeah, as you can see, it just helps remove the glue. It doesn't cause any kind of damages to the leather itself. It's just kind of a eyesore, but I guarantee absolutely every single cobbler out there, no matter how good they are, they get some glue on boots and shoes fairly frequently. And it's like little spots and stuff, but the important thing is that we got to make sure we try to clean it off as best we can. But after these boots lighten up, you know, that's a weird spot there. I wonder what that is. And there's a little bit of glue, but it's kind of dark. Let me see if I can scrub that out just a little bit more. These boots have seen better days for sure. And they're already starting to dry. You can see that. But yeah, we're going to give them a full conditioning anyways. Make sure to clean up that spot some more. There we go. So I'm going to let these dry and uh, we're going to continue on. I'm going to do some edge work on this very lightly. And then we are going to be putting in some brass speed hooks in there. Some actual brass ones for those of you who are, might be curious. Yes, I finally found my brass speed hooks uh, because after we moved from the next door unit over, it, uh, it was a little bit challenging unpacking all the small parts and items. And the brass speed hooks kind of got stacked away a little bit, unfortunately. Now this that I'm doing here also, I'd like to mention that we make sure that we get the whole entire boot. We don't clean a little spot, okay? And for all of you at home too, same thing. If you are treating your boots or shoes for salt or something like that, like you're using a desalter, make sure, you know, if you're gonna be doing a spot with the salt treating, like whole area or whatever, that's fine. I recommend doing the whole entire boot so that it doesn't have any kind of watermarks because you'll have some watermarks left over. And the other thing is, you know, if you pre-treat it for some salts or anything like that or minerals, afterwards you still have to go through and go through another cleaning process, which I'm still gonna do with some Reno mat as well. So these are gonna get a little bit of attention for sure but it looks like also some improper products may have been used on these because right under here, see how that's kind of crisping up a little bit when I'm pushing out? Because this is supposed to be an oiled leather. You can see on this side, when you push up from the inside, the leather lightens up. See, look at all that. That's what it's supposed to be like right there. It's supposed to have that more oiled finish, but looks like some wax or maybe something was put on here so that renal mat will really help pull that out so that we can actually do a proper conditioning on these and get the right type of conditioner on them so that's what happens when you use uh wrong kind of cream on these boys and girls so we're gonna go ahead and continue on I'll let it dry and we'll see you back in a few all right everyone so we're about to be putting on some of these speed hooks i've gone ahead and conditioned the whole upper with some saphir oiled leather cream 
There is some people call it the greasy cream, but if you need that, you can find it on our website. So that's going to be a lot better for your oiled leathers such as this. I've gone through and cleaned it up with the Reno mat first to remove any of those waxes, especially whoever polished them before. They used wax on it, so and make sure that was cleaned off. But here are the the uh, speed hooks that we're putting on. These are the milled version here, so they're definitely a lot stronger and more more prized in other words a lot of people in the shoe community want those here's the normal one that a lot of people see which is the stamped version of them the milled version there as you can tell the head is a little bit smaller on them well quite a bit smaller but they're a lot more solid versus the stamped ones so we're going to be putting on these solid brass ones here and yeah let's continue on So yeah, the press that I have, show it real quick, that's up here, right there. I have to turn the knob here, and so I was hitting my camera. Let's this thing up. There we go. So that's what was going on, and I was hitting the camera with it. So right now, I'm just gonna adjust this. I'm gonna hammer the this down because it, you can see how it flowers out. This one I've already hammered out, so it makes it a little more flush. This one, however, has not yet been hammered out, so it kind of sticks up. So I got this here. Oh, can't lose that piece. So this piece right here, actually, I've got two sizes of them, but they're designed for speed hooks in particular. You can see how there's that notch for the hook to go into. Then get pressed out. So these parts are actually one of the most expensive pieces for this machine, basically, or hand-operated machine. These things cost more than most of those machines themselves. So very important to have them. They're they're a few hundred dollars just for this little thing, a few hundred bucks. So gotta make sure I don't lose that one there. So let me get all of them in there. That's what they look like right there. We're just doing the top two nicely flowered out sometimes if we're using um, washers that's an option too but I usually don't recommend using the washers if it does this this is perfect actually when it flowers out like this this prevents the hooks from twisting and everything and they stay in place better but when you add the washer there's a little less resistance and so they can start turning and twisting after a period of time so I want to show that real quick to you I've got one in here already and I just got to get one more there and then do the other boot as well all right, everyone. So we've got everything finished out on these. We've got the edging done. We did do a neutral on it to kind of, you know, feature that leather nicely and everything. Still leaves kind of that roughed out look on the edges there. I think it looks pretty cool. I like that. And got the uppers conditioned. Got the speed hooks in right there at the top and the brass ones. Got the new laces in and also new insoles inside there because the other ones were one one boot was missing the insole actually and the other one was just wrinkled up all kinds of crazy um yeah these definitely need to you know be taken care of very well if this gentleman wants to have them for many years because there's some cracking going on here got to use the right stuff on your boots and shoes definitely if you want them to last for a long time overall uh these butts and shoulders uh boots they're pretty nice build I like them um, I mean phenomenal quality um, obviously it's not something like a thousand dollar boot or anything like that as far as quality build but I'd, I'd like them I I'd, I'd definitely own a pair so uh, no major liners inside and stuff I don't know if you can see down there but uh, some some shoes and boots I'd like a liner some I like to have a little more low profile and these are kind of the more low profile at least structurally internally less is more sometimes and uh well worth it but i'm gonna see if uh if they have a referral link if they do i'll leave it in the description below it'll be at the very top and i'll say um you know if you're interested in buying these shoes go to this website here it'll be a randomized kind of uh, referral link thing but if you want to get a pair 
please use the link because it gives us a small like little kickback like a referral type of thing obviously no additional cost to you but uh, it helps our channel keep growing and uh, continue on as well if you have any questions or comments leave them down below if they are smaller questions preferably if they are a larger more detailed question like a whole page type of thing almost or you need to send pictures as well find us on facebook at cobblers plus or on instagram uh, instagram cobblers plus co or you can uh, send us an email email does get a little backed up especially with all the spam I'm coming through at the same time too so it takes a, it takes us a few minutes to sift through it and uh, hopefully your message also doesn't end up in spam which has happened a few times here and there otherwise you feel feel free to call I'll leave a link to our website and all the other things down below as well and as always if you're local in Denver stop on by whenever you feel like as well otherwise I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, make sure you subscribe hit that notification bell icon and give us a thumbs up and share the uh, share the video if you have somebody that's wondering about getting a nice you know kind of boot to be able to wear i highly recommend these as being a well worthy boot to have just make sure you take care of them and don't use the pro uh, use proper products but don't use anything that you're not supposed to if it's questionable again send us a message we'll be glad to help out if we can otherwise we'll see you next time